Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is going to be a full build of the uh, Pro Modeler BF109 G4. This is actually the Hasegawa kit rebox for Pro Modeler. It is a very nice kit. Um, it goes for very cheap. You can pick one up from about $30 and it really builds into a nice, impressive model. And it's actually fairly simple. There's no major issues. I'm going to show you how I do the cockpit and other areas on this kit and go through the entire build with you. So as you can see, I've taken the cockpit pieces off the sprues and cleaned them up and I am gluing everything together. I'm actually using ammo glue that I placed into the empty Tamiya bottle. I like ammo glue because it's faster setting and so the pieces uh, glue together much faster than Tamiya. Um, although I still love my Tamiya glue, ammo works better for small parts because you need them to go together and glue very quickly. The cockpit itself doesn't have a lot of pieces, so it's very, very quick. Now on those wheels, make sure you are uh, inserting them correctly because there is a dip and one of the dips uh, faces inwards and one of the dips faces outwards. So just be aware of that. You'll see me drop a lot of parts. Uh, my hand-eye coordination is going out the window apparently and I completely forgot I had tweezers earlier so I'm using those now and I still drop parts so as you can see the wheels line up make sure they're perpendicular to each other the gun cover right here is a little annoying press it down and then pull it back into place and I just do that from the bottom and when you're ready to glue, make sure it's in place like this um, because it will dip down a little bit. And you can glue from the outside. That makes it nice. You also want to glue from the top to seal the uh, joint. As you can see, I'm doing that right now. Then you have the pedals, which are just pretty simple and straightforward. Now, looking at the pictures of the BF-109, uh, there are straps on the pedals that are missing um, that are not provided or and not molded into the Hasegawa mold here. And you can make those on your own. I build out of box, so I'm not going to bother with them. Just make sure when you do the pedals, they are aligned with each other. They're not completely crooked. And we're almost done with the cockpit. Um, we're gonna put in the uh, seat to bucket there, which is not the best fitting thing. And I recommend you glue from the sides to uh, keep it in place and secure it. So I'm gonna put a couple of drops of glue into the pinholes, get the seat in there, make sure it's firmly pressed down and then glue from the side to uh, secure the bond. And we're almost there. This is the uh, last main piece. There is the uh, uh, the throttle stick, but I'm going to add that later. Okay, time to prime the cockpit, and I am using Vallejo Mecha Primer Black. If you want to see how to get the best results from this primer, please go to my other video on how um, to use uh, Vallejo primers. And I recommend using primers, especially with acrylics, because they need something to bite onto, and you want to see where there are any imperfections on your model and create uniformity. So, highly recommend using 
primers, even if you're not using acrylic paints, I still recommend the use of primers. Make sure to hit every angle because uh, if you miss something, it's going to show through. So try to get it from all around. Make sure to cover the cockpit uh, tub completely. We're going to do a lot of work to this, so we want to make sure it's protected. As you can see, I'm going in from all different angles, making sure uh, I get primer on all the parts and no gray is showing afterwards. And make sure all the small parts are um, also covered in primer as well. And as you can see, I've already glued the tail um, onto the main fuselage. And I just find that it makes it easier uh, as you're going through the build. So if you can, or I would recommend um, it, gluing the tail into the fuselage. Um, and I recommend that for all different model airplanes, not just this one. Uh, when you get several pieces like this, it's better to have them line up like that. So there's no problems later on in the build. Now we are primed and ready for the uh, fun part, which is the painting. So I'm using RML uh, 66 from Vallejo for the cockpit and I'm using my thinning mixture uh, to thin the paint at 60% paint, 40% thinning solution. And if you're interested in the thinning solution, you can go to my first video and um, I have it in there. This is the base layer, so I'm making sure to cover all of the cockpit parts. It looks actually really nice, but it's really hard to see on a black background. But as we weather it, um, it will come through really nicely. Just make sure you get it uh, a nice good base layer, at least I would say about two to three coats. Nice thin coats though. Don't go heavy handed, don't uh, blast it in there. Uh, it will not look good and it'll get runny and, and maybe gritty depending on what kind of air pressure you're using. Nice smooth layers and covering all of the uh, different sides and angles. Okay, so for the first round of weathering, I'm using RML 02 heavily thinned with thinning solution, about two drops of paint to 12 drops of thinning solution at 15 PSI with a very uh, small fine tip airbrush here. And what I'm doing is I'm gently going in and bleaching the panels. And this is a very nice uh, effect you can get with an airbrush. Really, really like it. And basically it just makes it look like the sun has been hitting those areas and bleaching out the paint just making it look a little bit worn out and use as you can see i'm going into those spaces what i'm not doing is going into the 
uh, details, I'm going into the spaces around the details. I'm avoiding the detail areas because they're going to naturally have some shadows. So aim for the large spots where the sunlight is hitting constantly. And um, you can choose how much you want. I didn't, I didn't want to go for a very dirty airplane, so I'm not going to go heavy handed on this look. But as you can see, it, it does generate a nicer, very nice worn out bleached effect on the paint. For the cockpit tub, uh, the seat rest, uh, that gets a little bit more used uh, with the pilot's back constantly touching in. So I decided to go a little bit more heavier on that um, and on the sides and on the uh, floor of the cockpit as well. Just make sure that because the thinning solution is so thin to control your airbrush or you're going to flood the area and you don't want that. So just be very gentle when you do this effect. Remember, you can add in, but you can't take out. So always remember that with airbrushing. Go nice and gentle, go slow, add in, because you can't take back. Now it's time to accentuate some of the darker areas of the cockpit. And what I'm using is uh, um, almost pre-shading uh, those areas with a very thin mixture of a reddish brownish um, color with 20 drops of thinner and two drops of paint at about 12 PSI. And I'm really just going nice and easy over those recessed areas, those dark areas, um, those hard to see areas to try to highlight them and make them stand out a little bit, make them look a little bit used and worn out. This is a very, very nice effect you can get with an airbrush. So I, I really like it, especially for these type of dark colored cockpits. I think it looks really, really nice. Go nice and easy. And you don't have to be perfect. Um, just make sure you're, you're being very careful because with such thin paint, you accidentally squeeze and you're just going to ruin the cockpit uh, at this point. So go nice and gently, very thin needle, needle no uh, nozzle setup. And aim for those areas and don't worry about being messy as i said so and i'm going to do this not only to the cockpit tub but i'm going to do this to the side walls and to the cockpit panel um, and the throttle uh, all areas of the cockpit to give that nice effect Hopefully you can see where I'm pointing to. There's a darkish brownish shadow there now. And it just makes the cockpit stand out a little bit. And on the side walls, I think it's more visible and you can see the effect and it just looks a little bit more worn and used and just really nice overall. A word of caution, um, I was having to start and stop with my airbrush a lot uh, while doing this and I didn't realize my airbrush was dirty. You always have to make sure, especially when you're doing fine detail painting, that your airbrush is clean and uh, or you're not going to get good results. And I had to go back and redo this because my airbrush was just not clean. There, I found a little piece of, uh, I'm not sure what it was, but stuck in there and I was just not getting good results. So. Always make sure your airbrush is uh, cleaned before you use it.
Okay, um, I am now dry brushing the cockpit. I am using a very light gray, uh, Vallejo's light gray. And dry brushing, I've removed 99% of the paint. And I'm just hitting the very tops of some of the details here. And as you can see, it really makes them stand out, adds a little bit more into the bleaching effect we already did. I'm gonna do this for the entire cockpit. And the good thing about dry brushing is if you do go overboard, if you use Vallejo paints or any acrylic paints that can be thinned by water, if you thin them uh, very nicely, about 50% water, 50% paint, um, you can remove some of the dry brushing without ruining the look of the paint. So you can go a little heavy handed if you, if you make a mistake with um, water-based paints when dry brushing, of course. So as you can see, the cockpit is looking really nice after the dry brushing and um, it looks fairly well worn. And personally, I think you can stop here if you want. I think this is a very, very nice look, but I'm going to demonstrate a few more techniques for those who are interested. So we're going to do a couple more weathering techniques on this cockpit. The next step will be to apply an oil wash to the model. And in order to do that, first you have to protect the paint by uh, using a gloss coat. And I'm gonna use my favorite uh, gloss coat agent, which is the AK Intermediate Gauzy Agent. About two coats will do at about 15 PSI. It is really, really tough stuff and it's ready to go in about 15 to 20 minutes. You can begin your enamel washes and it's complete, the paint is completely protected. Now that the gloss coat is dry, I'm going to apply a filter. I am using Amos Blue Filter for dark gray colors. This is a very nice filter and very easy to use. A filter is basically very, very thin paint that changes the tone of the base layer. It's very easy to apply and the way to apply it is light, thin coats and make sure you don't leave any streak marks. In my opinion, a filter is really nice for dark colored cockpits, not so much for light colored cockpits, for, but for dark colored cockpits, it leaves a very nice effect and changes the tone to a little bit warmer tone that makes the cockpit stand out uh, to the eye.
As you can see, the filter is dry and I've done the uh, detail painting on the cockpit. Now it's time for the enamel wash and I'm using AK's wash for gray and blue colors. The wash is pretty simple and straightforward. Just touch it to the areas that you want the wash to go and capillary action will take care of the rest. Now this is a dark wash on a dark background, so it's a little hard to see at certain angles, but it does add a nice effect. And you wanna use a small uh, precise brush to apply it in these kind of locations. Hopefully you can see the wash right now and it looks a little heavy handed, but I am going to clean that up with some enamel thinners. So one thing I want to note here is the uh, yellow tubing in this side of the cockpit. In the middle section there that's uh, silvery uh, glossy, uh, that is actually a piece of glass in the uh, real um, airplane. Or, or uh, And so the liquid passes through there so the pilot can see it. And because that's molded in plastic, it's a little bit hard to replicate glass. And what I've done is I've used the Molotov uh, chrome pens and just brush painted that on there and put some gloss. And this really makes it feel more like it's glass versus plastic. It's not perfect, but it's a, it's a nice little technique you can use um, if you're building this kit. So time for a matte varnish. And the matte varnish that I'm using is the Vallejo matte varnish. It's a really nice matte um, in my opinion. It is not completely dead flat. It has a little bit of uh, shine to it, a very, very slight shine. I don't want a dead flat because it's gonna basically destroy all the work that I've done to the cockpit. So what was the point of everything if I'm just gonna make a dead flat? So I prefer this one um, over others. And it's very easy to use. Uh, just thin it 50-50 with thinning solution at 20 PSI and it's ready to go. And hopefully you can see that it changes the tone of the cockpit paint a little bit and goes on really, really nicely. Now that the flat coat is fully dry, I am going to add in some chipping using a metallic pencil. Keep in mind, metallic pencils and weathering pencils in general work best over a flat coat. I'm going to pick out areas where there is contact between the pilot and the cockpit and the paint just uh, 
chips naturally in those areas. I'm not going in heavy handed and you will notice at times I use my finger or a brush to tone down some of the metallic chipping and that actually adds in um, more realism because not all chipping is going to be the same uh, level. And as you'll notice in the cockpit there's a little bit of dust and I forgot to record that part so I will show you how to add in dust into your cockpit a little bit later in this build. For the last bit of weathering, I'm going to use amyl uh, rubble pigments to add in some dust into the cockpit. World War II airplanes got really dirty and really used, and so it was very common to see dust and dirt inside the cockpit. Pigments go really well over a flat coat, and they stick so you don't need a, a pigment binder to hold them in place. And if you get too much, you can brush it away or blow it away. Now I should mention I do not add in pigments or dusty effects onto my modern stuff. Uh, that is not how modern airplanes look. I work with modern airplanes and trust me if our cockpits were ever this uh, dirty, somebody would get fired. So this is definitely for World War II stuff uh, only for me. But it adds a nice little effect. <laughs> 